So as you're familiar with probably my style of working now, uh, pretty much, always it's we re- find it really helpful just you know, just always start with drawing a diagram because that captures all the information that you need into one singular place, and the process of just copying the information helps you already process the the physics subconsciously. It it, it works. Don't ask me why it does. <laughs> uh, all right. So starting over here, we will place two moles of ideal monatomic gas initially at a room temperature of 25 degrees under pressure. Imagine if you try to process all this information uh, in your head at the same time. It's very difficult. So we're going to break it down bit by bit. You place two moles of ideal monotonic gas. I'm going to stop right here right before we move on. And sometimes people worry that you need to, the diagram has to be very elaborate. No, that's it. <laughs> so that takes me one second basically to draw. And then initially at temperature uh, 25 degrees, right? so bit by bit, that's my strength. Right? So you never get overwhelmed. You always want to take care of one information at a time. Pressure of one ATM, pressure one ATM. And you, you're very confident you never miss any information this way. In a sealed container, uh, that looks sealed to me. The volume can change, all right, there. Uh, you can slowly compare, uh, compress the gas isothermally so that the volume, okay, so how do you draw compression, right? You can't animate things. Um, and if you've seen me solve any of these problems before, you know uh, the trick is basically draw a before and after, right? So before and after, right? So after you've compressed it. And how do you compress it? You compress it isothermally, right? So that's a keyword. Let's mark that down. Immediately isothermally, you know, hope if you've, you, you can, you there might be a few equations in your head that pop up already. What does isothermal mean, right? Maybe like T equals constant or delta T equals zero. Uh, if you're really good, you could remember that delta E equals zero as well, something like that. Right? So these are keywords, it's good too. Um, so this is a testimony of how well you study if you can remember these keywords, all right? Um, how, so that is compressed 0.5 times. How do I draw that? Okay, so the volume now is 0.5 times. How do I write that? Easy or also? Final is 0.5 times the original, right, times the initial. Okay, so that's done. Um, and how much work do you have to do on the gas? Okay, so how much? That sounds like an aim. That brings me to the next step. Uh, the aim is how much work, right, is question mark. You have to do on the gas. Be careful uh, of the grammar, whether it's on the gas or on the environment, right? Is it by the gas on the environment or by the environment on the gas? Uh, is, there, is, there, is there some external, is the environment or the external agent doing work to the gas or is the gas doing work to the, to the external uh, uh, environment, right? So uh, I will remind myself, this is very important for taking care of the plus and minus signs, whether this should be positive or negative at the end. So work uh, on the gas on gas, right? So that was important. And how much has the entropy of the gas changed, right? So the, that's part A, that's part B, how much has the entropy of the gas, right? Is there in terms of joules entropy, okay, so those are all SI base units, so I'm good. Right, so your aim is this, you just have to bring this together with this, right? Um, now, uh, we are ready to solve. Right, so remember the tips on relevant definitions. So, you have two options. You can either go forward, uh, think of how to get from here to here, or you can go backwards and think about how do you get from here uh, using those variables. Um, so uh, looking at this, if we go forward, it's not very helpful because all these variables, you know, P, V, T, the best I can think of it, a relevant equation is the ideal gas law, but if it's not extremely clear how I get to the W over here. Um, and so it's probably best to just go backwards. Uh, so we'll start with W. Um, here's a question for you, you guys. Uh, immediately in my head, when I think about work done, there's two equations that pop up, right? That's relevant uh, or definition or equation. Right? Can you think of two that relates W? So this is the part where revision comes in. So, yeah. all right, so I'll write down mine, see if you have the same. So first is the definition. The definition of work is, uh, is from initial to final of PDB. So this is always true. The def- definition is a thing that are always true. If, un- unlike formulas, where sometimes there is limitations, that formula sometimes doesn't apply to certain scenarios. 
but definition is always true because why is it definition means you're just defining a new concept with old concepts right so technically the definition of work is initial to final at the x right so you technically you know what force is you know what this uh, small change in x and distance is um if you multiply by area and divide by area you, you get this uh, so this is this is close enough a definition. Uh, this is close enough a definition as this. I'm just in this context, it's much easier to work with PDV. So I'm going to call that the definition. So this is if using some old concept. What's P and what's V to define that something new, right? So it's always true. So you don't have to worry about is it appropriate. Whereas sometimes you know if you use another formula like uh, I don't know uh, uh, maybe uh, the log V. All, all these things. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but this always works. That's just a quick comment on that. Um, now, with another one that relates that, that has W in my mind, it's, it's very fundamental as well. It's the formula, it's the first law, right? The first law, uh, which relates delta E to delta T plus delta W, something like that. Okay. All right, good. So, which one should I use if I have these two in mind? Um, looks like probably the first one because this has a P in it, so it probably relates to this. This is less. Likely, so that's what I will start. Right, so W is initial to final of PDB. So that's the definition of the change in work when gas is concerned. And now, what next? Uh, so I've used a relevant definition. Let's think about what relevant equations can be used to simplify this. Um, we talked about that already. Ideal gas law, right? Maybe that will work. So I, P is equals to PB equals to NKT or NRT. Right, so we can write as. Uh, people asked me before, should I use NKT or NRT? Well, they are both the same. Um, but if I'm given a little n, I'm going to use the little n version. They're both okay. So here is a relevant equation. And it's the ideal gas law. All right. And good. So now you now what? So now you have something, you have a very scary integral. Right? So how do we deal with scary integrals? So here's a general technique. Uh, Forgive me if you're already not way ahead of me, you know what to do. Um, just want to give you the general techniques on how to approach you know, problems. Imagine you're seeing this for the first time because um, the, in the next one and a half week, I guess, you'll be introduced to electric potential and electric potential energy, these two different concepts. And you'll have a few other extra scary integrals that comes in and uh, it'll be good to know the general way how to deal with this, even if you, have, you know what my next step is going to be. Um, so if you're thinking, uh, if you see an integral, the first thing to do is pull out a constant, you're right. So that will drastically reduce the uh, scariness of your integral, the difficulty of your integral. So you ask yourself, what is constants and pull them out, right? So let's see, so n is a constant, um, uh, assuming the gas doesn't you know, leak. Uh, so the number of moles of particles stays the same, um, that there's no leakage in my, in my process. Uh, and r is a constant, t is a constant, yc is a constant isothermal, right? So that's why that's good. We have the keyword there. So we're left with this. All right. So now all you have to do is integrate this. So now it's much more manageable than something scary like this. So if that wasn't scary to you, uh, that's fine. Uh, because uh, the, uh, I want you, if you see some more integrals coming up in the next few weeks, right? So now you know how to handle it. Usually pulling out constants immediately simplifies your integral a lot. Now you will know exactly how to integrate this, right? So integrating this gives you log. Uh, let me skip a step by combining the logs after you plug it in. So it's the yeah, like that. Right. I assume that you have seen most of these steps before, so I'm skipping to here. All right, so now you have this. Usually at this point, uh, you feel some sort of sense of loss <laughs> because uh, what do you do now, right? It still looks very scary. Right. So you, we talked about another technique is you change your pen color uh, whenever you see something very complicated, right? so you just change your pen color and check off everything that you know. Right? Of course, you can use the same pen, but <laughs> hypothetically. So if you check off everything you know and identify anything that you don't know, you, you'll drastically reduce the complexity of the problem into a very simple, let's see. Do I know M? Yes. Right? Do I know R? Yeah, that's the universal gas constant. Do I know T? Which T? Well, the T that goes from initial to final, but it's constant, right? It's isothermal. So there's no initial and final, there's just one T, right? So I do know that T, all right? Do I know, do I know VF? Uh, sort of, right? Um, do I know VI? I, I actually know VF over VI. I know the ratio uh, is 0 0.5, so yes. And I'm done. 
So you see that, of course, I have to plug in the numbers. Uh, another thing I have to take care of is the positive or negative sign, which is subtle. But those are problem specific. But you, hopefully you see with the general technique that I, the general advices and general tips that I'm showing you, they apply to every single problem. The black bit starts off setting up your scenario right. It should take the whole process over here. Uh, this part should take no more than 20 seconds. This should take no more than five or 10 seconds. So the whole thing should take no more, more than 30 seconds with practice. And then uh, ask yourself relevant equations. So you have to study with what are keywords and relevant equations, um, and then follow uh, these very general tips. It will bring you almost up to plugging in numbers and solving and, and finding the sign, whether it's plus or minus, right? So this is 80% of the problem solved. So learn, I encourage you to uh, learn these techniques um, and try to use it even when you know what, what you're doing, even if when you know the answer, for example, with this problem, you might have done it many times already and you would jump right to the end. It's fine if you know it, but I encourage you to start here if you, if you have the chance to practice because if you, if you don't practice with, with a problem you know how to do, when you come, up, when you come to a problem you don't know how to do, the, you, you, will, you will not be familiar with the technique enough to have it work for you. Right. So imagine tr you're trying this system for the first time in a, in a final exam, you, you will get stuck. So make, make sure you try to practice things as much as possible leading up to the final or leading up to the questions you don't understand so that it will work for you.